Well, bless his wonderful holy name. Thank the Lord once again for this wonderful Sunday morning here and above all to start this week by coming and walking into the house of the Lord. It's a wonderful privilege. It's an honor and it's a, it's, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. To dwell in the courts of the Lord. Yes. To lift up our hands in the sanctuary and praise yes. the Lord. Yes. It's wonderful to walk in walk in the assembly yes. in the fellowship of you saints and to lift up our voices in one accord. And uh, to if only we we can here do this and we have the right uh, right spirit and if we can here blend our hearts together and if we are willing to crucify our spirit, the only way we can follow Christ is by crucifying our spirit. That's it. Who will come and follow Jesus? Who this message will proclaim? Who will crucify his spirit? And only then we can take on Jesus' name. That's that's the that's the gospel. That's the message. That's uh, that's something that the Lord wants us to uh, to do in our lives. And that is the purpose. The whole purpose that the Lord has called us is to conform ourselves to the image of His Son. That's the whole purpose of our calling. We were talking about love, last service. We're speaking about love, loving God, uh, loving one another, loving our fellow brothers, our fellow sisters, loving our family members, and loving loving even the people outside that are still in darkness, that are still darkness, and uh, that don't even know about 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 Jesus. Don't even know about about the Bible. How can I? How can I preach uh, the gospel to an to an uh, to an atheist or to an unbeliever, to a person who's not even a Christian? The best way to preach the gospel to those people is by showing them love. Because love, if it was love that reached out so tenderly to each each one of us, the reason why we are sitting here. Is because God chose to reach out to us in love. In love, the Father calls to you and me. From sin, we can be free because of love. Whatever the Lord does, He does it out of love. And it was love, someone said. It was not the nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was the love for you and me that held Him on the cross. That's how, that's how much He loved us. That's how much he still loves us. And we look at the scripture in John 13 where Jesus said, Now a new commandment I give unto you. Not the old commandment where it said that love one another just like you love yourself. Because human love is selfish. Human love is conditional. Human love is selective. It's selfish. I love you because I expect something from you. If I don't expect anything from you, I won't love you. That's called selfish. Human love is conditional. There are conditions that I impose on people if I want to love them. If I give you a gift, I expect a gift. That's condition. If I do something good for you, I expect you to do something good for me. That's conditional love. And human love is also selective. I select the people that I want to love. This, 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 this man, this woman, this brother, this sister, this, this, they look good to me. Uh, they are good to me, so I love them. This brother, this sister, I don't like because they didn't treat me good that day in 2001. See, that's selective. That's selective love. I select the people I want to love. That's, that's not, but God's love is unconditional. There are no conditions. No conditions apply. Someone said again, I don't remember who it was, whether it was C.S. Lewis or whether it was Charles Spurgeon, he said that no matter what you do, we'll never, no matter what we do, we'll be able to change the way God loves us. You may, do, you may get to that deepest sin, but God will still reach out to you in love and take you out of that sin. And help you to overcome that sin. That's love. And that's what we were looking at the scripture in 1 Thessalonians. Let's turn to that scripture once again. 1 Thessalonians in chapter 3 where, where Paul is making the statement here. And he says that the Lord will make you to abound, to increase 
and I bound in love one to one towards another. It's not just a stagnant love. It's not just a love that's at the same level. But I love you more today. I, I love my church members. I love my brothers and sisters more than I loved them a year back or two years ago. That's what Paul is saying. He said, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and also toward all men that are outside. Even as we do toward you. Why? So that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. And that's what we looked at the, at the scripture. And I made a statement last time that it's the failure in love that prevents us to being established in holiness. It's a failure in love. Because we don't love one another like Jesus loved us, we are not established in holiness. We think holiness is, is, is that I wear a white shirt and a tie and I have a short hair and women retire, grannies not and, and they'll cover their, they have, they'll have sleeves up till here and they'll cover their body. And we think that is holiness. Well, that's an external form. But what about our inside? Holiness and love go together. We cannot be established in holiness unless we have a heart filled with love. Otherwise, everything is just is, is, is just show, showing off. See, what's the sign that I am filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, you may say I speak in tongues. And I speak in tongues every day. And I speak in tongues. I used to speak in tongues for 30 minutes. Now I speak in tongues for one hour every day. That's a sign that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, even the Satan gives tongues to people. If, if, if John said that hereby perceive me the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, that means there are two spirits right now working in this in this world. Some are receiving the spirit of truth, some are receiving the spirit of error, both speak in tongues. Both. That's not a sign that I'm filled. Speaking in tongues is is, a, is, an, is an evidence that I have received. I have received. I'm not full. I have received the Holy Spirit. See, but then I need to grow in the Spirit. I need to walk in the Spirit. And this scripture, uh, keep a finger here in the first Israel, and let me look at the scripture in Romans, where it says that tribula tribulation of patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope make it not ashamed. And here in Romans chapter 5, is it? Yes, Romans chapter 5, and it says verse 5, and hope Make it not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by whom? How? How is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts? By the Holy Spirit. So what's the what's 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 the sign that I'm full, full of the Spirit? I'm full of God's love. That's the sign that I am full of the Holy Spirit. When the scripture says Stephen being full of the Spirit looked up to heaven. What does it mean? He was speaking in tongues when they were stoning, stoning him? No, he was full of love towards them. And he says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for it. They, they, they know not what they are doing. Peter, when he was full of the Spirit, he spoke to the people after the day of Pentecost. His heart was full of love towards those unsaved people and he wanted them to be saved. A minister, an elder's heart needs to be full of love to save the congregation. I don't stand here or we don't stand here to fulfill our agenda or to get back at some of you because you've mistreated us. That's not a heart of love. If someone mistreated me badly and I stand here the next service and I put the whole service and dedicate it to them, that's not love. I'm using this desk to feed my flesh. See, but it says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, so our sake was five, by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. That's the sign of being full of the Spirit. That's the, that's the difference between how David died and how Stephen and James and Jesus and all after the, after, after, after the day of Pentecost died. When David died, he told his son Solomon, Remember Shimei? How he cursed me? 
Don't forgive that person. Bang his head against the wall and kill him. That was David. That was David. He didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. We can't blame him. But here on this side, in the New Testament, people when they died, they forgave the people that were stoning them, crucifying them. And Peter said, I'm not even worthy to be, be crucified upside down, uh, straight up, uh, head up, but crucify me upside down. I'm not even worthy to die like my sin. That's, that's a heart full of love. There was no animosity toward those people that were stoning them and killing them. See? Because, because the love of God was shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, that, that makes the difference. That makes the difference. That, that, that absolutely gives, that is the power that Jesus told those 120, go in the upper room and wait. You cannot do this on your own. You need a comforter. You need a helper. You need the power from God to live the way I lived. Without which you cannot live the way I lived. And Jesus loved us. And how did he express his love towards us? When he said, when he told his disciples in John 13 that, that love one another just as I, has, I have loved you. How did Jesus love us? And how can we increase an abounded love? Just like Jesus. So we need to reach that. That is the standard of love. We need to reach towards that love that Christ has for each and every one of us. We are not there yet, but we are reaching towards that. We are reaching, and, Paul, and that's what Paul said, that the Lord make you to increase and abound in love towards one another, that your hearts will be established in holiness before Christ comes. If we are not filled with love, we are not ready for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are not ready for His return. And we need to love one another just like Jesus loved us. And the way Jesus loved us, the, in, in the love that Jesus had for me, we saw last time, He had a cross on which He died. And in the love that I have to show towards you and towards my family and towards the people that are outside there is a cross that I need to die on. I need to die to self. I need to die to my ego, to my pride, to myself, to my passions. I need to die. Die inside. I need to die to love that husband of mine that is so wretched. How can I love that husband? How can I? How can I love that, that family member of mine? She is so awful. She can't even talk straight. How can I love? Well, that's the cross that we have to die to self and we still reach out towards them with a heart of love. That's what Christ did while we were yet sinners. The scripture says, Ephesians, Christ died for us. While we were yet in our sins, and we were yet sinners, He didn't wait for us to be good to Him and then die on the cross. Only those who are good to me, I'll die for them. No, while we were yet sinners, He died for us. There was a cross that He uh, died on, not just on the last day of His life, but every day to love His brothers that hated Him when he was growing up. He loved them, even though they hated him. And they, they, they went to Joseph and Mary and told a lie that Jesus broke it, we didn't. And Jesus walks in and Joseph asks him, Jesus, did you do that? And he looked at his brother and he knew that they had told a lie. He said, yes, I'm sorry. You know what this wouldn't have happened at the home? Everything was very, very, very rosy in the home that Jesus grew in. You think Mary and Joseph didn't fight? But Jesus still respected them. He still submitted to unperfect parents. Because he knew even they, those two were the people that he came to die for. There was a cross that he had to die. He died to self his entire life. Likewise, we in our love for others need to die to ourselves. 
I'm really telling you, it's, it's not easy to love people, saints. It's not easy to love people the way Jesus loves us. We really have to die to ourselves. It's not easy for a wife and a husband to love one another. Especially in the lockdown when they are staying together 24-7. Or even otherwise. Because you know their weakness inside out. You know it. It's, 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 it's my, in my love for my family members, in my love for my brothers and sisters, there's a cross on which I need to die. And if I'm willing to die, saints, I won't be offended. The reason why we get offended because somebody hurts us is because you know, we are not willing to die. A person with pride gets offended. A humble person can never be offended, no matter what people tell him or her. A humble person will never, because he's dead. He's dead. He doesn't, he doesn't live for people to respect him. See? We are talking about the love of Christ. We are not talking about the love that, that we, have, we, have, we have experienced from one another. And for that I need to really experience Christ's love for me. If I experience that love, only then I can share it. And I can show it. And the only way I can have that love in me is when the Holy Spirit puts that divine love in my heart. Otherwise, humanly, it's impossible. Otherwise, I'll only look at the weakness and the faults. That's why some people get offended and they leave the church. And you know when they leave the church, they, have only, they forget all the good that the church did for them. But they remember only one lesson or one statement of rebuke. But they, remember, they forget every good thing that the church did for them. That's what we need to rise about. That's what John again, in first in the first episode of John and chapter 3. We all know John 3.16, but let's read first John 3.16. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where? When did God give his son? When in Bethlehem when he was born? No. Isaiah 9 and chapter 9 and verse 6, I believe it says, For unto us a, 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 a son is born, a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The child was born in Bethlehem, the son was given on Calvary. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son there on Calvary, that whosoever believeth on him shall have eternal life. And then 1 John 3.16 says, 1 John 3.16, Hereby perceive we the love of God. How do I understand God's love now? How can I understand God's love? Because he laid down his life for us. See? The reason why I, I value his love because he died for me. And then he says, and we now, and we. John is including himself. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. It doesn't mean when somebody comes to kill you, I stand in front of you. No, that, that will happen sometime ahead. But now, before I reach there, I need to love you and die to my own self. To love imperfect brothers and sisters. And I may be an imperfect brother that you may be finding hard to love me. See, it's not only you are imperfect and I am perfect and I am trying to love you. No, I am imperfect. And you all sometimes need to, be, need to bear with my imperfectness and the imperfectness that we elders have here and still love us. It works both ways. So, the, so, so, one, so one way that, that Jesus showed his love towards us is by dying on the cross. The other way that Jesus showed his love towards me, here in Revelation, let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. How does Jesus show his love? How does Jesus love us? What does he do to the people he, love, he loves? Here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 19, Jesus makes a statement, As many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. So, so one sign of God's love for me is that he rebukes me and he chastises me. If we are without chastisement, Paul said, we are illegitimate children. 
We are not sons, we are illegitimate children. Only the, only the illegitimate children God leaves them and doesn't chastise them. But the sons and daughters are chastised, are rebuked. That's what Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore. So he rebukes in love, even his rebuke, even his chastisement is an act of love. Not like our rebuke to our children. In the We rebuke them in the fit of rage. Sometimes I, we rebuke our children because they hurt us, they hurt our pride. That's why we rebuke them. But God rebukes in love. Even the rebuke of God is motivated by love. Even the chastisement of God is motivated by love. And, and He chastises in love. And this is a level of spiritual maturity. If we, if we have never heard the Lord rebuke us or chastise us saints, we have never experienced His love. Paul had to experience a thorn in his flesh. He had to experience a sickness on his body that never left him. That was the love that God had for Paul and God said, This man, Paul, has given him so much of revelation and I knew, and I know God said that if I leave him like this, he'll be proud, he'll be exalted. But I love Paul so much that I don't want him to be proud, so I'll give him a thorn. I'll give him a sickness for the rest of his life that he will stay and live in that sickness so that he will remain humble. That's God's love. So thank God for some sicknesses. Amen. Thank God for some sicknesses that he doesn't heal. Timothy had a stomach problem that was never healed. Gaius had a problem in his body that was never healed. There are some sicknesses that never will be healed. Because that sickness keeps me humble. It keeps me on the ground. That's the love of God. It's okay, saints, to die with cancer and to enter into the kingdom rather than to be healed from cancer and remain out of the kingdom. See? That's, that's the love of God and I never want to stop listening to the Lord correcting me. That's why when we hear a message or when we read a scripture, if it talks to you, saints, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. That's the love of God that's showing me that yes, joy, this is where you lack, this is what you lack, this is what you need to, this is what you need to change, this is what you need to repent and turn away from. Turn away from this life, turn away from this attitude, turn away from this, from this, uh, from this lifestyle that you're living. This is a wrong attitude that you showed towards that brother or towards that sister. This is a wrong attitude. You didn't speak anything, but the attitude was wrong. See, sometimes we keep our mouth shut, but we can show the most damnable attitude we can ever show. Oh, but I kept my mouth shut, but your spirit was wrong. That's not love. So never question God's discipline in our life, saints. Never question, that's a proof of His love. And similarly, so, so now you don't say, oh, so Jesus chastises me, okay, so I, He rebukes me, so I start rebuking everybody now in church. Mm -hmm. No, that's not your ministry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, the, that's the something that the elders and the minister have to exercise and that too with a lot of prayer and a lot of consideration. Just because somebody did something, I don't get up their kicks. We don't decide, oh, let's, let's get at them. Oh no, there has to be a lot of consideration and prayer sometimes to deal with some people. But God, just as God's love is not so wishy-washy, uh, lovey dovey love. Sometimes even to correct few brothers and sisters saints, we have to keep our soft corner aside and we have to be strict sometimes and tell them things the way they are. That's love. So don't get upset when a man of God rebukes you or corrects you. He who receives you, receives me. He who despises you, Jesus said, despises me. And he who despises me, despises the Father who sent me. Your wrong spirit towards the ministry 
is a step, it, or, it, or it's, it, it's, it's a fish that you show towards God. And I don't care. And that, wrong, that, th that person may be even my wife, if she shows a damnable spirit to me when I correct her, she's showing her fist at God. The same way if I, just to show my dominion, try to correct her, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the godly husband I su I'm supposed to be. I'm not working in love, I'm working out of pride. I'm not joining hands with God, that time I'm joining hands with the Satan. See, I took an example that, that goes for all of us. That goes for all of us. So, so God's love is not a wishy-washy love that gives us healings and gifts. But just because God is not healing someone, that doesn't mean God hates them. No. Maybe God loves them the most. God loved Paul more than the people that Paul healed. Paul healed so many, but Paul himself was sick. Paul healed so many, he couldn't heal Timothy. Sometimes our way that we look at things is very different since we still look at people and things carnally. Just because we see sicknesses on some people and we say, oh, they are getting what they deserve. Oh, God's unhappy with them. No! That may be one of the signs that they are the most loved by God. And because God wants them to stay humble, God has kept that sickness in their body. Despise thou not the chastenings of the Lord, the scripture says. So godly correction, godly rebuke is not easy. You have to lay down your soft corner to rebuke the saints sometimes. You have to pray and ask God's wisdom and direction to speak a word of correction to God's people. I, we just can't mistreat you just because you don't talk back to us. See, just because you all hear whatever we say doesn't mean that we can mistreat you and speak whatever comes to my, our mouth. Is that type of love that, is, that will build this church? And is that type of love that will build your family? Is the love that Christ shows towards us, if we show towards, in, towards one another in the church, this church will be built strong. It will be strong. Love one another just as I have loved you. So, so this is how we get established in holiness. This is how we are as established and our hearts is established in holiness and we are unblameable before God. Let's aim to live like these saints. Let's aim to live this way. Let's aim. It's not easy. It's not easy. But I'm telling you, it's not impossible. Now let me give you the key how we can live like this. So we all now may have thoughts in our mind, oh, how to live like this? It's so impossible. I, I cannot. And it's true. It's true. Is it, is it, is it? Humanly possible to, to love a person? Take any, a, a picture of any person in your mind that, that hates you. Is it humanly possible to love that person? It's not. Let's be honest, saints. Let's not put, put on a show of godliness. God loves honesty. He loves honesty. Now let's turn to First Thessalonians and chapter 3. The answer is in the scripture itself. How do I increase and abound in love towards those who don't love me? That may be your husband, that may be your wife, that may be some brother, sister, that may be some boss on your job. That may be your neighbor. How do I increase and abound in love towards those who have hurt me, really, genuinely hurt me? I'm not saying uh, hurt, uh, you hurt them, but you think they hurt you. No. There are some people who are genuinely hurt. Really, genuinely. It was not their mistake. But they were genuinely hurt. And it's very hard to love that person again. Right or wrong? It's right. Let's be honest before God here. It's, it's humanly impossible to love people that just used you all their life. They used you and thrown you. 
They have schemed schemes against you. They have devices, 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 devices against you just to put you down. I know I've seen that. And if you try to humanly try to love them, you'll fail every time. You'll, you'll do that for a couple of days, and when the thought comes back, you'll just back off. It's humanly impossible. It's not easy. But here this verse, now let's read the first five words of 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 12. What does it say? And the Lord make you to love, to increase an abounding love. Who does that? No. The Lord will cause you to increase an abounding love. Not you. Not you yourself. But now, God himself takes the initiative and puts that love in your heart to love that person. That, that's the whole difference. That, that makes the difference. That's, that's completely that's something that David didn't have. That's something different. That even the Old Testament saints didn't have that. We have, we have the power of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the comforter. We have the helper that God sends in our hearts. And then that Holy Spirit em em empowers us and fills us with love. And the Lord through the Holy Spirit then makes me or causes me to love my fellow brethren and sisters. See, see that difference? And then I tell people, oh, I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm very spiritual. Shh. How do I show that? that I'm filled with the Spirit. I love that person who has misused me and mistreated me. I still have a heart. Doesn't mean I go and sit with them every day and I chit and chat with them and I knock their door every day. That, that's not. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking that my heart is filled with love towards them. I don't have anything in my heart against them. There's nothing in my heart. There's nothing in this heart of mine but praise for them. There's nothing. There's nothing in my heart against them. Tomorrow, if they're in trouble, I'll be the first one. I love them. I love them because the Lord has made me, the Lord has caused me. The, I, if, if saints we go honestly before the Lord and say, God, I can't, I can't, I can't love this person. I cannot. I cannot love this tyrant, this wretched husband of mine. I've tried my best, but I cannot. I cannot love this nagging wife. I cannot. I tried my best to love God, but I cannot. Will you please help me? I tried my best, father, to love that brother, that sister. I can't love because they're so strong-willed, they're so selfish. Lord, I cannot do it on my own. And since there may be a person in your family, there may be a person in your church, come honestly before the Lord. Come honestly. Tell God that this is something that you've tried that you're not able to. And He will cause you, if God sees that, that, that desire that's really there, that you really want to increase and abound in love, saints, Jesus said, those who come to me, I will in no wise cast them out. I will never throw them. You go to God with a genuine heart and with a genuine desire to repent from that lifestyle. I'm telling you, saints, He is there to help you. And He will do that every time. You go to him honestly. He will cause us to increase in love and walk in love. Paul said in Ephesians, walk in love. Don't just talk about love. Walk in love. That's that's the he, he, again he says uh, that uh, that forbearing one another. Uh, let us forgive one another, just like God for Christ's sake forgave us. And above all, he says, let's put on the bond. Let's put on the love of God, which is the bond of perfection. Efficiency. The love of God is the bond of perfection. 
See, that's very important in our life. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is something that, that the Old Testament didn't have. As I told you, the Old Testament was just a commandment. Thou shalt do, thou shalt not. Thou shalt do, thou shalt not. Thou shalt do, thou shalt not. Jesus says, come, let's do it together. I'll show you how to do it. Jesus walked in shoe leather for 33 and a half years and he showed us how to do it. He showed us how to love the unlovable. He showed us how to love the people that hate us. He showed us how to love our enemies. He showed us what true love is, what divine, what agape love is. He showed us and he proved it by living a life that absolutely pleased his father. Absolutely pleased his father. Here again in the same book of First Thessalonians in chapter 4. See again he's talking about brotherly love. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. But as touching brotherly love, Paul says, you need not that I write unto you. How much? He said I'll write to you. How much? But now he says, but now things have changed. He says, now you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Since no matter how much I try to teach you to love, I fail. But if God teaches you to love one another, you will succeed. Paul, that's what he's saying. Paul is saying that touching brotherly love, how much I write. You need not that I, I should write to you over and over and over again. He says, but now you are taught by God to love one another. That's just the beauty. Of, of a New Testament church. A New Testament church is enabled by, by the Holy Spirit, by the power of God itself. Where we can do and we can live impossible lives that people think is impossible, we can show them through our life that it's possible to live this kind of a life. Not because I'm smart, not just because I'm, I'm intellectually uh, very smart or I'm somebody that, uh, that, that, that I tried my best to uh, serve God and I fasted seven days a week, 12 months a year and God gave me this. No, it's not because of that. It's because of the power that God has given and that power, saints, is in every one of us that have received the true Holy Spirit. Every one of our hearts. Let's come honestly before the Lord. Let's come honestly. As God said, I will write my law in your heart, as I said last time. It's not you do it, do it, do it, no. But I will write my law. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will enable you to love one another. Just like I loved you. Again, it says in Philippians, isn't it, where it says, For it is God that worketh in you. Philippians chapter 2. See, that's another, another promise. This is, a, this is a promise verse. It says, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. For it is God, it is God which worketh in you. Whenever the thing talks about some God working in me, it's through the Holy Spirit. God always works inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And now he's telling, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So this is the Lord, is it's the it's God. so if I want to explain the scripture very plainly, it says uh, it, it is God who helps me to choose his will and also to do his will. So now if you have that desire really to serve God, it's not because you did something, but it's because God gave you the desire to serve Him. It's because God gave you the desire to love that person. It's because God gave you that desire to, to do that thing. So it is God. Let's take the human out of the picture. Let's take the human out of the equation. We cannot do this on our own. We need God. We need God. We need His help. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the unction from above. And He said, it is God which worketh in you. Both, both ways. To choose His will and to do His will. That's called empowerment. That's empowerment. That's spiritual blessing. 
See, that's what David, uh, let me find the scripture. Where David uh, makes a statement in one of the Psalms. He says, I delight to do thy will, O God. And, and Paul quotes that saying in, uh, in Hebrews. So if I don't get that, that verse in Psalm, let's go to Hebrews 10 and find that verse. But I think I got it here in Psalms. Psalm 40. Psalm 40, this is not David. He's making a statement here. This is, this is, I know this is talking about Jesus. He says, Psalm, the 40th Psalm, Psalm 40 and verse 8. He says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I said, I, I, I delight to do thy will. Your law is there in my heart. But when Paul quotes this scripture in Hebrews, isn't it? Hebrews 10. Now when Paul quotes the scripture relating to Jesus, let's all turn to Hebrews 10. Keep your finger in Psalm 40. In Hebrews 10 and verse 7, he says, Then said I, this is, this is Jesus, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written about me. Now, now when Paul quotes Psalm 40, he writes, In the volume of the book it is written of me, I have come to do thy will. Not just to delight to do thy will, now there is a difference between this. David says, I delight to do thy will. But when I look at Bathsheba, that delight is gone. I delight to do thy will, Samson said. But when Delilah came, that will was gone. I delight to do thy will, Jacob said. But when it was a question of the birthright that the will was gone. But Jesus makes a statement, he says, I don't delight, I just don't delight, I don't stop there. I really want, I do your will. It's no longer delight. We may, you, we may have that delight, oh Lord, I delight, but I sit in front of the computer and I open my mobile. There's no longer that delight to do your will. I look at something else. I would delight to do that will, Lord. I would really want to, but when that person comes in front of me, I really cannot love them. But Jesus said, irrespective of what is happening in front of me, I just don't delight, but He says, I do. I have come. To do thy will. And greater is he that is in you than all the people that are without. Because the power that is in us is far more greater than the power that is outside. The power of temptation and the power of hatred. The power of love is much more, is the greatest force in this universe. That's the power of God's love. That's, that's the difference. That's, that's called empowerment. That's called enablement. Since it's humanly impossible, I understand. I'm not here to discourage every one of us. I've even gone through that same thing. But when I, I, I read that scripture that the Lord will cause you to increase and abound in love. If the Lord decides to help me, what can the devil do? I just need to align myself with God. See, I need to, I, I just need to say, yes, God, yes, Lord, yes, Father. Only that when God sees that desire, when He sees that desire, really, really, that you really want to change from that life, you really want to move on from hatred to love, when He really sees that, He is there to help us. He will help us. He will. And if he is standing behind us and pushing us, nobody will be able to stop us. Even though even all of 8 billion people in the world stand against us, and if God is behind me, pushing me, even the 8 billion people can't stop me. That's why we need grace. Grace is not something 
some 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 definition that so many people grace is a power to overcome sin that's the true definition of grace and grace is a result of Christ's death on the cross after Christ died on the cross grace was let loose from him it came with and it, it, it came along the Holy Ghost it's, 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 it's power to live a life that will be pleasing in the sight of God. So thank God for our church. Thank God for being with us here today once again. It's, it's good to have have such areas of scriptures opened up and, and things so that I have not belabored the point. And, and let's let's have let's ask God, God. Let's be honest to, to God when we when we go to the Lord in prayer. When I'm alone, let's be honest. God, yes, this is my problem. This is, this is, I cannot do it, Lord, on my own. I need your help. I really want to change from this mindset. I really want to change from this nature. I really don't like uh, my, my moody nature. Whatever it is, whatever it may be, whatever it may be that's holding you or that's keeping you, whatever it may be that's keeping you from loving one another, let's tell God, I need help. I really want. I really want to change. And Jesus said, I will never cast you out if you come with the right spirit and the humble heart. He says, the eyes of the Lord are always upon the, upon the lowly and the one that is contrite in spirit. A person of broken heart and a contrite spirit of the Lord, you will never despise. Never, 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 never. There's always room. There's always room with God if you go with a broken heart and contrite spirit and with honesty and then we see our lives changed not because we did something but because God did it for us it's not I who do it anymore but Paul said it's Christ that is in me that enables me to do it where I cannot do it on my own but now I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that's the difference. That's, that makes the difference. Now you take yourself out of the equation. You just go honestly before God. You just say, God, I need help. And when he shows you something, you say, yes, Lord, I need that. Yes, Lord, that's my problem. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to change. And then the Lord will hold your hand and lead you on paths that you have never walked before. That's what Jesus told Peter. There will come a day, Peter, when you stretch forth your hands, and another will gird you and take you on ways you have never been before. Say this, there are ways ahead of us that we have never walked on before. Let's stretch forth our hands. Let the Lord hold us. And let the Lord cause us. Let the Lord make us to walk on that path of love. Thank God for the church. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God that we are not smart. Because it's very hard to, to find, to get smart people or intellectually smart people to serve God. There are many smart people sit out, outside in the whole world. But we, God said, Paul said, thank, Jesus said, thank God. Thank you, Father, that you have not revealed these things to the wise and the prudent, but you have revealed these things unto babes. Thank God for everything. Thank God for His mercy, His grace. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for His love. Thank Amen. God for His love. That, 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 that we have an example now before us. And that example is Jesus. And let, let us also walk in the same footsteps. And let us then be examples to the younger generation. Let us be examples to the people that look up to us. Let us also make a statement like Paul made. It takes a very... It takes a humility to make that statement, follow me, as I follow Christ. It's not pride, it's humility. Because that man went through the process of being broken. Let's continue to pray one for another sake. Let's, let's not forget to pray for the ones that are sick and weak among us. Let's continue to pray for Brother and Sister Senji that the Lord has His hand upon them to send their love and their greetings to all of us here. 
So let's pray for them, pray for their visit next month, that the Lord makes a way for them to visit and be among us. So let's make it a matter of prayer and if we really desire them to be with us, the Lord will grant us that desire to be a blessing to have them among us. So let's also pray that this, as the government is thinking of lifting up the sanctions on the 7th of this month, which is this, this Saturday, right? Uh, Saturday it is. Right. So, uh, this Friday? Right. Friday. Okay, so so I hope that we will be able to meet in church now, but we will still have to maintain social distancing. We will let you know. We will make some rearrangements with the chairs and all because we don't want people to sit very, very, very close to one another. So let's be, let's do our part. Let's pray. The Lord keeps this 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 pandemic away from us. It's, it's been hard. These 18 months have been hard. It's still hard economically on, on some people. They've lost their jobs, they've shut down businesses. A lot of problems, a lot of issues. Let's pray that the Lord helps those people and helps his children there and provides their needs. And uh, till the time everything comes back to normal, I don't know how long it will it take, but our God is in control. He will make all things well. Let's pray for the needs, unspoken needs of many brothers and sisters that we have and the Lord will help them in their lives. Whatever the needs are, let, let love cause us to pray one for another. And may the Lord help each and every one of us. Amen. Why don't we all stand up and thank the Lord for this time. Let's all pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you once again for being with us, Lord, for covering us, for giving us this time to walk in your sanctuary. Father, as you're instructing us in love, and as you're opening up our hearts and helping us to experience your love first, Lord, help us to understand that we can't do this on our own, Lord. We need your help. We need the power and the enablement of the Holy Spirit on the inside. Oh, Father, it's humanly impossible to love the way you loved us. That's why even Jesus was filled with the spirit of wisdom and with the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Spirit, of Lord. And that what helped him in the flesh, the oh Lord, to live a life that will be pleasing in us. And Lord, we want to be full of the Spirit. And we want your love to be shed abroad in our hearts, Father, towards one another, towards all men, towards our fellow brothers, our sisters, our family members. Lord, help us. You make us to abound and increase in love towards one another. Father, because we can't do it on our own, and we need you. We need your help, Lord. Help us, oh, Father, to come honestly before the throne of grace and you be with us. We pray for all the elderly saints and the ones that are sick and weak among us. We pray that you touch them and their bodies and help them, O oh, Lord. Also the ones that are in need of many things, O oh, Lord, in their lives. Father, we trust you that you are able to provide all our needs, O oh, Father. And you supply every need in the life of all your children, Father. And we commit them and their, and their families in your precious hands. We pray for the church, the body of Christ throughout the weekend services, O Lord. And we pray for the saints and the ministers. And we pray for the minister Sanji that you have your hand upon them and bless them. Cover them and keep them and make a way for them to be with us, Lord, once again. We thank you and we come in this week in your precious hands. We ask you for being with us and your presence to always be with us, O Lord. Till we come back in your sanctuary. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.